Hello, Promotional Products Association International is pleased to present the online educational program, Relationship Marketing. My name is William Poole and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Please note that today's program is being recorded and all participant phone lines will be muted during the broadcast. Today's presentation will last approximately 60 minutes. You may submit a question or comment at any time during today's presentation using the Q&A window on the lower right hand panel of your screen. Immediately following today's webinar, your screen will be directed to an online survey. Completing this short survey will enable PPAI to continuously improve our webinars to better meet your needs. And now it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Jim Sochi. Jim Sochi is the president of Artistic Toy, a promotional products industry supplier of Stuff Plus Toys. Jim joined the field of marketing after a career in finance and accounting. Jim and his team at Artistic Tour are on a mission to inspire the use of plush toys in advertising with their character. They believe every organization can tell a better brand story through the character. Today, Jim will be presenting Relationship Marketing. Please welcome Jim Sochi. Thank you, William. <clears throat> so today is April 15th. Happy Tax Day to everyone. So if anyone needs help uh, finishing up their tax returns, um, yeah, I'm all, I also in the previous life was a CPA, so please please feel free to uh, you know, send me uh, your tax returns. No, I'm just kidding. That is a joke. Um, what we're here to talk about today is relationship marketing. Uh, too many small businesses are playing by the wrong set of marketing rules. Today's marketing professionals must position themselves beyond the product, above price, and working hand in hand to co-create a more meaningful, personalized, lasting advertised experience. This webinar will give you some skills to build superior client relationships and build upon your existing marketing and promotional product experience. I'm going to give you examples of integrated marketing campaigns that produced extraordinary results for me personally. <clears throat> I'm also going to help you dust off some of those old uh, marketing textbooks and make sure we understand what has changed, what has stayed the same, and how we're going to use this to improve our business and sales success. That's what it's all about. We're going to get started here on a journey, a journey into relationship marketing. <clears throat> I think the best place to start this journey is with some definition. So some of you, you know, you've obviously heard relationships. You've also heard of marketing. You're, you're around them every single day. But really, what, what is a relationship? I like simple definitions. So let's start with let's start with my first definition of a relationship. Vehicles used to move people. Think about that. Think about the relationships that you're in. Think about how the experience of life is improved because of those relationships. I love the example of thinking about uh, watching baseball. Some of you are maybe baseball fans, some of you may not. I am not really a baseball fan. So you will not find me on a Saturday afternoon watching a baseball game. But if you were to come up to me and say, hey, Jim, you want to go to a ball game? I'd be like, absolutely. I love the experience, the relationships that, you know, that are built because I, I like that person. I want to spend some time. And it is actually enjoyable to watch baseball. For me, not necessarily, you know, sitting in front of a TV is not necessarily enjoyable. I'm not that kind of fan. But, so I just want you to think about how relationships actually move people. And that, in my example, that relationship, a relationship with somebody will actually move me to go to a ball game and do something I wouldn't normally do. So let's also talk, let's transition that into marketing. What is marketing? I think in our industry and I think in a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of our customers kind of sometimes get this confused. But we've got to come back to marketing is insight and information. Consider this. I mean, you say, oh, you know, I'm a promotional products uh, architect, consultant. I'm going to help you. I can help you with your marketing. Okay, well, really what you do is you take a printed, you take a logo and put it on a printed product, and maybe we call that it fits into marketing somewhere. But in its truest sense, marketing is insight and information. And that's so important in relationship and relationship marketing. because. People, let's face it, people are reactive. They are going to react to certain communications that then are going to help them decide whether they're going to move forward in a relationship with you and or your company. 
So those are I just the, sort of the framework around the importance of relationships and marketing. Last but not least about relationships and marketing I want to leave you with is that relationships and marketing, it's an area of life and it's an area of your business that you can never, never, never stop working on, stop improving because it's always changing. Think about a relationship with a spouse or a child. They're growing, they're maturing, they have different needs as they go through life. Same thing with your business, same thing with your client's business. These are always areas we're going to be needing to improve upon. So now that we've got some clarity around some definition, let's say, oh, geez, why is this important? Okay, so let's think. Three reasons. Okay, customers buy from me. Okay, this is about relationships and marketing. I want people to buy from me. My customers want people to buy from them. So why are relationships and marketing important? Well, let's see. Hey, you've got the best price. You've got, they, they need a product. You have a product. Let's do it. And, hey, you have superior service. That's why your customers buy from you. Do you believe that? I believe that's what your competition wants you to think and your customer to think. But well, let's face it. You know, sometimes you don't have the best price. And if you're always competing on price, you're just lowering, you know, lowering the price of the competition. You're lowering your value in the marketplace. You have the product they need. No, you don't have the product they need. You go out and get the product that they need. So, you know, there's a lot, there's, there's thousands upon thousands of people that do exactly what you do. And finally, superior service. I've heard that a number of times. I work with thousands and thousands of different, you know, salespeople in our industry. And they, they, they love to tell me about how we really service our customers. Well, I've worked with them and I would, I would, I would just, it kind of horrors me a little bit to think about how they might service their customers. Think about, I mean, I think even of us that really do give good service, think about the number of times when we ran into a problem or a challenge, and your customer keeps coming back. Why, why is that? Why is it that they keep coming back? Are they, are they naive? Uh, you know, what is it? So, so as you can see, I've kind of put this up here on the screen because to tell you that, Really, the fact is, this isn't why your clients are buying from you. They're not buying because you got the best price. Maybe, maybe that happens from time to time, but it's really not why they're buying. You know, you've got the product they need. Okay, they called you. You, you, you responded to the call. They gave you, you gave them what they needed. True. But there's, again, thousands of other people that can do exactly the same thing, especially with web, web-based today. Forget it. And service. All right, we all make mistakes. It's, it's true. So why do people why do your customers buy from you? It really, there's only really three reasons. And those reasons are very simple. Your customers, they know you. They like you. And they trust you. There it is. There's only those simple reasons. And if you think about it, people that you're in a good relationship with, why are you in a relationship with them? They know you, they like you, and they trust you. You share maybe some common interests. You've developed a rapport over time. So there is really, this really is why relationship marketing is so, so important to your business. It's like I like to say, these are all ingredients of a good friendship. People buy from who they like. And I, as a matter of fact, I'm sure you even, if you think about it, there's people that you don't like, and even if they have a product that nobody else can provide, you'll find a way not to use them. I mean, that's just the reality of it, you know, how important it is that, that people like you trust you and know who you are. So <clears throat> relationship marketing, in my view, is really, really important to everything that we're doing. Yeah, you know, I think the competition would like to, you know, think differently when they advertise they got the lowest price and, you know, all these other things, and we've got 700,000 products we can offer you, and I can do this, everything, till Sunday, and I'll never say no to you. No, I, that's, that's kind of counterintuitive to where relationship marketing wants to, you know, will take you. So, here it is. Jim Sochi, CAS, Artistic Toy, inspiring the use of plush toys in advertising. Uh, I'm not putting this up there for an advertisement. I just want to say that I'm just like you. 
I got the same struggles, the same challenges as a small business owner. One difference, though, may be that maybe I have a little bit more passion, you know, to, you know, with, and I see some of the opportunities. I really have a vision for what I think could and should be for the industry, for the professionals in our industry. I really see great opportunities. I mean, with the amount of products that are available, I look at promotional products. I don't just look at toys. Yes, that's what we manufacture. But really looking at them as communication tools. Do we understand that? Can we help people if we know and understand how to use promotional products, which I believe to be the most powerful, absolutely most powerful communication tools in our, in our industry? You know, a lot of people, you know, that, that don't know me, you know, maybe they look at this picture and they say, oh, this guy, he's, you know, looks like he's a professional speaker, you're an author, you know, that kind of stuff. But the reality of it is I supply plush toys with printed logos to independent network and distributors who really don't care who I am. Uh, they just want to know if I've got, if I have the product in stock and if they can have EQP. There it is. That's really, you know, in the minds of the masses, that's kind of, that, that's that's who we are. But that, that in of itself infuriates me. I don't want to be just another number. I've got so much to offer, as I believe all of you do. I mean, if you look at my background and my history, you go on my LinkedIn, you'll see that I was a CPA. I worked for some of the largest companies in the world. You know, PricewaterhouseCoopers, AIG, State Farm, just to name a few. And and I, and I'm, and I, you know, I'm sure like you do, and you all come from probably very similar backgrounds, you're starting to, you know, feel like I'm just this supplier. There's got to be something. There, there's definitely a more, I'm worth more than this. And and I'm, I don't want to share with you some of that desire that I have and, and hopefully spark some of that. You know, that's, we got to, we got to change the face of this industry. And it starts with each and every one of the, one of you that are on this webinar today. You guys are the few. I believe that are willing to step up and attend an education seminar and better yourself and better this industry. So I applaud you for doing, for taking this time today and also your willingness to make a difference for our industry and for your, each of your businesses. Because I think it goes well beyond just, you know, you know, just, just you. It's about your community. It's about uh, this industry. It's about, you know, your family, everything. Let's do more. Let's inspire others to take promotional products and this advertising medium very seriously. I think it's a great opportunity for us. So what I wanted to dig into, I, I promised you guys some skills of what, what's something I can take back. I want to form better relationships with people. I don't know about you, but, but one of the dreaded questions that, I've been asking, and I've dreaded this for a long time, is that, you know, you're, someone asks you, so what do you do for a living? I, and it should be such a natural thing. But, like, you know, did you ever get, you know, you have that, those conversations at, at, you know, family gatherings or, or networking events, and it's like, oh, man, how am I going to explain what I do? And, you know, do I get too technical? You know, I'm sure you've, you've heard the conversations where the person just, like, throws up all over you you know, with what they do, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm confused. I don't know what they do. I, I won't be able to tell anybody what they do. So, I mean, and that's really where the relationship starts. It's like, hey, what do you do? How might we work together? How might I tell someone else about what you do? And, you know, the real the response that we should all be looking to get is what I've got posted down at the bottom there. Oh, really? How does that work? You know, if you were just to make one statement to people about what you did, where they responded, oh, really? How does that work? That would be pretty impressive. That would be a really good skill to have. So I want to give you guys an example of what you might be able to say to change the face of some of the relationships that you're looking to build in the future. So it starts off, just as I've stated there, I show businesses how to, and I underline businesses because I wanted to emphasize that you could say I show people, I show salespeople. You can change that word out a little bit, but 
I want you guys to keep in mind if the next statement that the next you know four or five words that come out of your mouth, and I want you to think, is this going to make me say, or what I could I imagine someone say, "Oh really, how does that work? Tell me more, okay, so here he goes, my first one. I show businesses how to fire their marketing department. <laughs> oh really? How does that work? I can see that I can see that getting that response. How about I show businesses how to put their marketing department on commission. Hmm. And my personal favorite is I show businesses how to increase their average order size. You know, for me personally, as a supplier, I, you know, I would position this slightly different. I would say I manufacture stuffed toys for advertising campaigns, but what I really do is show salespeople how to take their average order size from $500 to $2,500. Hmm. Oh, really? How does that work? That's the kind of response. That's how we can get what I call the invitation to really get their interest and get them to really take an interest in what you do. So <clears throat> that's, that's the key. You need something simple. You've got to get to the bottom line, and you want those people to respond with, oh, really, how does that work? I think if we, if I, if I can teach you just that one thing today, and you use that, and you know, you're going to use maybe a slightly different line in different presentations, or you know, or, or different groups of people, but just that concept, that idea that you want to wow them and give them a short statement that you know invites you to tell them more about what you do. So, here it is: artistic toys sales mantra. I put this together about 40 years ago. I came up with some positioning statements. I was working with a, uh, you know, some marketing consultants and some business coaches, and and I really like, you know, it bothered me. There's things about this industry, things about our customers that it's really, really bothered me. And I just crafted this statement, and I said, you know what? We are a relationship marketing company that specializes in the manufacturing of stuff toys. But our focus is on helping salespeople and their clients recognize the potential of character marketing. Okay, kind of sounds fancy, you know, what does it mean? But for me, like, I, I really just put relationship, and this is the point in time where I put relationship and marketing together. We are a relationship marketing company. And then I come to find out books have been written about this, and this isn't really, it was a sort of a newsflash to me. I didn't know I was doing it or thinking about it at that time. But, and then I, you know, began the journey, began to study it, you know, more and more. So let's get to the heart of it, though. You know, that's a, you know, sort of a nice polished sentence, and we talk about relationships and marketing and specializing, da 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 But at the heart of it is that, number one, I refuse to be treated like transactions, or we refuse to be treated like transactions. Two, the value that we provide only starts with a product. That's why I'm on this webinar. That's why, you know, I'm every, I want to be involved in everything this industry has to offer. Because the value only starts with the product. And last but not least, character is central to everything that we do. You know, these are qualities that I believe since you're on this call that you probably share in some of those. And these are qualities that my organization holds true from, you know, from, and it helps us to, to make decisions and to build relationships with people. It's simple and it's easy, and I think it's something everyone in our industry could or should embrace at the heart of it. Let's, you know, sometimes we got to say no to those clients. Let's not sit around and just get them the, you know, they, you know, let's not just process orders routinely, you know. Let's say, you know, why are you using this product? Was, is there a better way? Did you get the results that you were looking for? You know, and, you know, you can trust them. Because character to me is, is about integrity, you know, beyond, you know, a fancy character that, you know, may be in their, in their logo or in their marketing. It's about this integrity, and it needs to be central to everything we do. As we build the integrity within our own organization, within the, you know, within uh, the industry, this is going to catapult us into the future. That's my belief. So what are we going to learn today? if we haven't, you know, learned a couple of things already, but about relationship marketing. There's some theory out there. There's, I've got a ton of examples, and I want to show you how 
so you can integrate some of these things. You know, I want to take some time to, you know, kind of do a deep dive in some of the theory. Well, no, not really, because we don't have time to do that. But I do want to start there because it's really the basis for what I'm talking about. So if you do want to dig deeper later, and, I, and also I don't want you to think I just made this stuff up. You know, there is actually textbooks written on this stuff. But I think what's always most important in this limited time we have is that we, we get into really those examples and really drive those home, really tell those stories about how it works, and then start thinking. So you can start thinking about, oh, okay, how am I going to leverage this information into my business today? You know, we, I got to do something now. This is, you know, we're not just going to take all this information and sit on it. Let's, let's, let's get this into our business. Let's take some action. Even if it's not right, you know, completely at first, you've got to take some of those first steps. <laughs> So that's where we're going to go. So first, the theory, marketing, mass marketing theory. All right. Does anyone know who this gentleman is? Philip Kotler. He's, uh, you can see that's a picture of him. He's, uh, he made a statement there. It's quoted by saying the best advertising is done by satisfied customers. Well, <clears throat> he's actually, uh, I would say, more of the, the father of mass marketing. And he's a distinguished professor from Kellogg Business School at Northwestern. Um, he's, you know, written, you know, some books about, you know, so 45 years ago. And he is most known for the four Ps of marketing. What do you think of the, you know, is the, the four Ps? And, and those of you that have, you know, studied for, you know, have attended a uh, marketing class in, in college or you've, you've studied for the CIS exam, you know the four Ps, right? Product, price, place, promotion. So that's what I think Philip Collar is most renowned for. But that's kind of where a lot of marketing education stops. The reality of it's only the beginning, and we need to go beyond that. I mean, if you stop there, we're gonna, you're going to be in your marketing and your business development you're going to be out of cash and you're going to be out of time before you really get started. That's the truth about mass marketing. Mass marketing is extremely difficult, extremely expensive. So we need to go beyond the four Ps. Now we go to relationship marketing. Dr. Pepper. You guys may not think Dr. Pepper is a relationship marketing company. And they're probably more on the mass marketing side. But the reason I put Dr. Pepper there is a visual. There is a, uh, about 20 years ago, a Dr. Don Peppers and Martha Rogers came along and started writing about customer relationship management theory, which is the central theory and guidance around relationship marketing. They've written textbooks, developed some very complicated formulas. However, I want to simplify it for you down to three things. I would say these are their three Ps of marketing, not their four. This is three. If you add them up, you get seven. But let's just focus on the three things that really relationship marketing is talking about. We're talking about people, we're talking about purpose, and we're talking about passion. If you or your customer's marketing is missing these three things, you could, you could have the best product in the world, you could offer it at a great price, you could distribute it in the right place, and you could take lots of money into your promotions, and you'll be doomed, doomed in this age, in this technology age. So this is just, again, I don't want to go too deep into the theory, but I want you to have that broad understanding of where it's come, where it's come from and where else you can look. So this has kind of created a revolution. Some of you uh, may be familiar uh, with this. This is a book, uh, What You Gonna Do With That Duck, written by Seth Godin. And Seth Godin wrote a number of books. But if you look at his writings and you look at some of the, you know, the blog posts and all that, all that he's doing, He's really come up with the fact that people in marketing and in their businesses, they don't quite do a good job communicating the qualities that make them remarkable, that make people say, wow, that's, that's great. How does that win? Maybe that question, how does that work? How can you help me? That's what Seth did. And, and in this book that he's written, What You Gotta Do With That Duck, he compiles lots of stories that illustrate how people and businesses are wasting too much time getting their ducks in a row and less time getting started. 
and, and the important thing about getting started is getting started with your passion and taking risks. What are you most passionate about? You, you know, you got to sometimes think of your hobbies. Think about who you are. You know, for me, I'm this kind of person. I want to change the world. So that's why I'm like, I got to get involved. I got to get involved in, in volunteer things, you know, with, you know, whether it be PPAI, uh, whether it be in my community. I want to change the world. That's, that, may not, that may not be you, but there are things that I am confident each of you are passionate about, and you're already doing them, and it doesn't even feel like work. I just challenge you to take that and apply it to your business. Apply, you know, and, and move forward with it. And, and just, we all have to decide what we're going to be the best in the world at. So I challenge you to look into those passions, decide what you're going to be the best in the world at, and go for it. Also, another really important thing that Seth Godin has done with this book and a number of his other books is that he gives us what, are, what I call word pictures. And it, it reinforces something that we all know. You and I, all people, we all think in terms of images. So when we see what you're going to do with that duck, or we got the duck picture, we got that duck image. You know, we've heard statements, cliches, hey, you got to get your ducks in a row, right? You know, all those kind of things, they help us remember. So you got two things happening. Number one, when we use this type of word picture, it creates a story, it's easy to remember. Number one, we relate to what's being talked about, and we remember. And when you can use, when you're marketing and the advertising that you suggest for the people that you're working with, and you can bring this together for them, you simplify the messages. And a simple message is the best. I, you know, I, I, I'm continually working with my, uh, my sales and marketing team here. And one of the things that I've, you know, I don't know if you guys are faced with this, is that, you know, we're working so hard on that marketing piece, and we just try to put too much into it. You know, and, and it's like, oh, I want to, I want to tell them that, about we got the best price. I want to tell them about we can do this, and we can low no minimums, and we can do, you know, blah, 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 all these things. And we try to cram it in the one small space. And that's where we got to, you know, separate that out. So simplify your marketing messages down to stories and images, and I think it will catapult your business. So let's jump over to a little exercise here. This is something, uh, maybe we call this a little bit of a take-home exercise. I ran this exercise when we were on STEM Expo East. Uh, early in January, and it was a real, it was kind of, it ended up being like, you know, somewhat of a, a revealing of you know, my own case study. Uh, what I did is I, is I challenged uh, the, the attendees in, in that seminar to um, think of the last single order they had over $2,000, and I said, what, the, why was that product important to the promotion? And then I said, what resulted for the customer? So, you know, I challenge you to, to think about that right now. And because this is, you know, can you tell it, can you tell a story with that order? I believe that the amount of stories that are available to each and every person in our industry and even for your, your clients at that many are limitless, are absolutely limitless, and they're so powerful because people are going to relate to that. You are going to be able to you know, stories are non-threatening. You know, people are going to relate to those stories, and you will magnify their experience. They'll be able to, you know, show you, you know, you'll be able to show them, you know, certain things, and you'll be able to convey messages to them with those stories and those images in a really non-threatening way. And you can also, you know, share some of your successes through those stories. What a better way to Promote yourself. Advertise. Yeah, hey, you know, it's not, you know, in terms of, like, what it's going to cost you, it's minimal to trying to execute some mass marketing campaign. You know, your stories are yours. You know, they edify, you know, you. They give you credibility. You know, those kind of things. So what I, what I challenge, I literally stopped the presentation for five minutes, and I really challenge everybody to do this, is to take, you know, some time and really, like, think about that story and then, 
as we as the, as the time ended, I, I said, okay, who's got a really good story? And a couple of people, you know, raised their hand. And, and then I said, no, like, who's got a story that's ready to be published in PPB magazine? And then, like, the hands got fewer. But then we still had those really aggressive types. And they're like, yeah, 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 I got a story, I got a story. I said, all right, you got one minute. Tell me your story. And she went for two. But the thing is, is that she went in, and it's like, oh, you know, this customer, and, you know, we met him somewhere, and, and then they, they needed some bags, but then they wanted these really expensive bags, and then it turned it into a $60,000. I said, great. You didn't, answer, you didn't really answer the questions. I mean, we got the first one. It's over $2,000, or it's way over a $2,000 order. But you really haven't told me why that product was important as a promotion. And if it were, you know, it wasn't really a promotion or it was, you know, it was sort of an internal, you know, you know, giveaway to some top executives, you know, that kind of thing. And, and what resulted for the customer? So, you know, I don't, you know, I think we're, I know in my business, I'm challenged, you know, hey, we, there's a lot of transactions that we just process every single day. We're just processing, processing, processing. But are you looking at the production line? Are you looking at the finished product and saying, how have I helped someone today? with their marketing? Or how might I take this information that I already know about them and help them in the future? So <clears throat> what I've found is that people, like that you and I and, and a lot of us, the majority of us, are not taking the time to do two up to three things that we need to be really, really, really successful. I'm not just talking a little bit successful. You know, hey, we're getting by, you know, selling, you know, ton of orders, you know, all that kind of thing. And, hey, we get lucky and we got a big order. We got a big $60,000 order and this is great. But to get consistent results, the results that you can rely on, that's going to take something else. That's, you're going to have to find another gear. We're going to have to go a little bit further to see, you know, to – to change, uh, you know, what we're seeing in our in our business. I, you know, uh, I got some family members that tell me, you know, it's better to be better to be lucky than good. Well, I'd like to be good, and I'd like to be lucky. So I think in part of being good, it's a simple formula. We gotta we gotta plan. We gotta take some time to plan. We gotta implement, and then we gotta review. It's it's really that simple. You know, a lot of educators use this philosophy. You've got to put some up, up, up front plans together. We've got to implement based on that plan. You've got to work your plan. Now, you know, you know as well as I do, there's no perfect plans. We've got to spend some time thinking about what's the purpose, what do we want to accomplish, and then, boom, we're in the implementation. We're going to have to tweak things as we go. We're going to get it done. And then review. Did we get the results that we're looking for? Those are some key, key things I want you guys to think about. Well, well that's all well and good. You say, well, Jim, tell me about how you planned and how you reviewed and implemented and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, here's my case study. This is the whole story. This is, you know, by far one of the most uh, wonderful projects that we've had the opportunity to work on over the last couple of, you know, over the last year. And we just recently won a PPI Supplier Achievement Award for, you know, most creative product collaborative development. We worked with a uh, promotional products uh, distributor or consultant, if you will, and uh, you know we we were you know we got the second place award here, and I've, I've shared this uh, you know in some you know articles, some PPB articles, some blog posts. We were published in a in a regional newsletter. I've done some webinars in which I've exploded out you know really the details on this. But caress you know, the short story is you know caress carpet. Uh, they're looking to do a promotion, and they are promoting their new uh, their, their new carpet. It's the softest thing, you know, out there. It's all made from all the softest things in the environment. And when you go to this video, you, you know, you, you are going to see their 30-second clip of how they sold this, you know, or how, what they want people to think and feel when they're about their carpet. It's getting them those, those story and that, that mental image. Now we have to say, okay, once we have that story, once your client has that story, what are we going to, how, how are we going to tell that to everyone in every, in every form possible? That's appropriate. Video, print, product, online. That's the whole story. You've got to take a, you know, a simple message, 
and we've got to use different mediums to tell that story. So that's why I encourage you. you know, it's slightly different for you know a supplier versus a distributor, but at the same time, you want to tell that story in as many different mediums as possible, and it's all integrated. It all ties together. So if you have an opportunity, there's several other webinars, um, you know, on branding and things of that nature where I tell you know the broader story on this campaign. But just know this resource is out there, and you can use it as a model and as a template for where that it, where I want to go and what I want to do. Uh, you know, to tell better to tell a better story to have that material and information to send off to my clients and, you know, give them confidence in my ability so that they will trust me. So, the uncomfortable truth. I think this is a little bit uncomfortable that most enterprises, and I'm, and I'm putting you and me and our clients in this boat, that we know little or nothing about our individual customers. A lot of us are ignoring our customers. We've all done it, let's face it. You know, I always say, it's always kind of chuckle sometimes when it's like, oh, I got this great opportunity, it's gonna be a lot of repeat business and don't hear from the customer two, three years. Whose fault is that? I mean, it's not mine. I mean, is it mine? Yeah, part of it is. We've got to nurture uh, those relationships. We've got to invest in them. And, and frankly, even if they don't want to talk to you, you've got to make this important. You've got, and, and this really, you know, okay, that's the relationship part of this. The marketing part is, you know, oh, people, I always hear, oh, they don't want to hear what I have to say. No, they don't have time for me. They're so busy. I'm just going to be responsive when they call me. Okay. Well, then you and I, if that's true, you and I are not really the marketing professionals that we'd like to claim that we are. Because we have to position ourselves so that they want to talk to us. We need to do the research about what is going to make those customers respond to us. We've got to do our homework. And a lot of that is taking an active interest. I'm not talking about stalking them. I think we've got to look hard at who these kind of people are and how we would build a relationship with them. So, and, and demonstrate to them that we have what it takes to take their business, fire their marketing department, and you know, or put, it, or put their marketing department on commission, which means you. You know, say, hey, you know, this is how it works. And I am a, a master carpenter who's going to take communication tools and revolutionize your business. You know, that's, that's just it. I mean, I can tell you my own personal stories about clients that, that, that I've, you know, that I've ignored, but I just picked up the phone. I recognized what was important to them, whether it be product safety or things that, like, I've had, I had all the material. I just kind of forgot. I just thought they knew. Sometimes your clients don't know. You've got to pick up the phone and remind them and tell them. And, in, 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 again, similar to in, in videos, in prints, in, uh, you know, email marketing, all across the board. If we don't do that, you got to face the fact that in today's economy, there are just, there are just too many choices for, com for customers. And if we're not deciding who's important and who we're going after to make sure they know our story and how we're helping people, we're, we're going to be easily forgotten. So that's your challenge and also the challenge of your clients because they're, faced, they're running up against the same thing as you and I are, maybe at a different scale at a different level. But just knowing that, you can use that information to reach them. So, what can I do? Hmm. Well, it sounds pretty simple. You know, hey, I need you to adopt the mindset, to build relationships, to go beyond your products. All right, that sounds easy to do. But let's face it, it's easier said than done. But I can tell you what you really need to do. And is that you need, and I need to do this as well, encourage people when they're doing a good job. When, you, when they're doing something good with their business and with their marketing. That is what you can do. 
to help build a relationship. So few people pay compliments that the ones that do are so long remembered. It's 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 not even it's not even funny. These are the things that we all just need to remember. It's 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 a it's a basic thing. So so maybe what you want to do is is look up Dale Carnegie. I mean the guy sold millions of books on how to win friends and influence people. Um, you know sort of some basic things, but we just got to continue to remind ourselves, you know, about these things. Other things that you can do is um, you know get an accountability group. You know, seriously research some people that will hold you accountable, will challenge you. About two years ago, I, I put together an independent board of advisors, and it was probably one of the best things that ever happened in my business. Um, I, I picked some people that were in the industry and some people outside the industry, and it has made all the difference. You know, you don't know what you don't know, and you can't see your blind spot. So I would strongly encourage everyone to – you know, not you know, adopting this mindset, but doing practical things. You know, you know, encouraging you know, encouraging others. You know, reading up on some principles that you already know, and, and really, you know, telling some stories and getting people to hold you accountable. You know, to doing the things that you know you need to be doing, but maybe you just aren't. The uh, last, you know, I got two stories. I recently attended. Uh, PPAI's uh, lead, which is for those of you that don't know, it's the you know legal and education, you know legislative education and action day down in Washington D.C. And I had just it was a wonderful experience being with congressmen. And the first thing, the first thing that happened was I met, you know, we met with uh, Pennsylvania Congressman Mike Fitzpatrick and walked into his office, and we had been in other offices. And, you know, everybody in that office came up to me and, and Chuck, who was with me, and said, hey, you, you're comfortable? Would you like some water? Would you, you know, like a soda or some coffee or whatever? And they were very genuine about this. And then by the time we'd gotten in, you know, like I said, it was about four people that said this. I said to the guy who was with me, I said, you know, this has got to be the most hospitable office we've ever been in. And the guy I was with had met with the congressman before, and he brought this out. He said, Hey, Mike, I want to let you know, your office team is fantastic. They're amazing. Well, he made the comment. He said, you know, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's the leadership. I mean, it was so it was like a breath of fresh air from the leadership in our country to meet people like that. He said, you know, we keep our door always open. You know, we passed a lot of doors, in, you know, in, in, you know, in the house building that doors were closed. But And you could feel and sense that difference. That is, you know, someone or that is an organization that understands the importance of people and relationships. And it's not just, it's not smoke and mirrors. It's genuine all the way down to the core. And that's the kind of, you know, again, what you can do. You know, another thing. Um, you know, I just happened to have the pleasure of being with, uh, you know, Paul Bellatone. And, yeah, I, I complimented him on, on a few things very sincerely, very genuinely, uh, you know, over the last two years, a couple of things that, that happened. And he remembered that. And he called it out. He said, you know, Jim, I, I met you two years ago. I didn't know you before then, but now I see you everywhere. And you're just doing an amazing job. Thank you so much for all you're doing for the industry. You know, in front of, you know, 70 to 100 people um, that I consider to be some of the most powerful and influential people in our industry. Those are the things, they're simple things that you can do that are going to build relationships and return to you things that, uh, you know, we can't, we can't put a price tag on. So let's talk a little bit about the bellwether. What is the bellwether? Well, bellwether is something that sort of predicts the future, right? You may have heard it before. But, you know, it's awfully in, like, you know, economics and financial services, that kind of thing. But your bellwether is your business purpose. And I got news, good news for you is that, you know, we all as business owners or as salespeople have a central uh, business purpose. And just remember this. It's to keep and gro keep, uh, to get, keep, and grow customers. And we all, like, we all have this central purpose. 
every one of us in business. We need to know it. We need to stay focused on it. Yours is, you know, your business purpose. It's going to sound a little different. You're going to use different words. But businesses without this clear purpose are defined, typically struggle to succeed. You know, you don't need a whole bunch of fancy words and all that kind of thing, but you just got to have a real clear picture of what it is, you know, that you stand for and what it is that, that you want. And that is going to help drive some key decisions around, around relationships that you want and the marketing that you're going to do. So I encourage you to, you know, continually refine your business purpose because it, it was Tony, Tony Hirsch that said at PPI Expo, it's a culture. You've got to be developing that culture. And that culture, that internal culture, is such an important part of your marketing. It speaks volumes for you. So moving on to strategy, some more strategy evolution. I, I want us, I want everyone to, to understand, like, there's there's kind of two I know, opposing uh, strategies out there. Like, you have mass marketing strategy and you have relationship marketing strategy. They, they seem to oppose each other, but they're really they're really not opposing each other. They're just like one is actually sometimes a little bit more neglected than the other, but you have to develop it, you know, so that it fits your business. But overall, like I think the relationship side in a lot of business is neglected, but what it comes down to is focusing on increasing the overall value of your customer base. And and that's extremely good news. I mean, it's like when, when you think about it as a small business, when you think about you already have all the potential you need right inside your current list of customers. And if you can build that relationship, you can typically grow your business more rapidly and with less resources than if you were to apply a mass marketing strategy approach. That is the big aha, I think, in adopting this relationship marketing, you know, theory and strategy. I like to say, let's work smarter, not harder here. If we can increase our average order size, you know, let's face it, it's a process in order of $500 versus $2,500, you know, it, it, the cost is relatively the same to you and I, it's just your time. Where are you going to focus your energy? And, you know, that's just, that's just a, you know, a conscious decision, an on-purpose decision that uh, each and every one of us has to make. So just to encourage you to, uh, you know, not neglect this relationship marketing strategy. So if you want to check your strategy, you know, again, I, I put it up here, a market share focus strategy versus a customer share focus strategy. I don't want to tell you one is necessarily better than the other. It's different based on the kind of organization and company that you are. Um, but you can see there's some clear uh, distinction. And that's why I say they're kind of opposing, but they're just, they, they all have their, their purpose, uh, you know, for the kind of product and the kind of, and the kind of company and culture that you are. Uh, <clears throat> so your market share focus, you know, if you look at the, the products and brand are the source of the value. Where the customer share focus or the relationship side is the, Customers are the only source of value. There's like only source of value. And that's a, that's a very strong and bold statement. You know, the market share focus, they're selling one product at a time to the mass. Where I think if we look at, um, you know, promotional products companies, we sell many products to one customer. You know, market share, we differentiate products, you know, differentiate products from the competition. We differentiate customers from each other. You know, that's, that's a big distinction. We are, as market focused, they're always, hey, they're like, hey, you know, we know the stats. We're going to have to replace 25% of our customers this year. we got to ramp up the marketing. we got to find those 25% you know, percent more customers this year. Well, the customer's focus is to say, you know what, you know, we've got to find a way to penetrate our, our clients better. That's kind of what this is coming down to. We, there, you know, there, we know we've got an unlimited, untapped resource within these customers. We are going to be the masters of mining that, uh, of going into that uh, database and building those relationships. Customer, or market share focus, you sell the customers, collaborative, collaborative or customer share, it's, hey, we collaborate with the customers. We're your partners and we understand your needs. 
that's that's where we're going here in uh, relationship marketing. The market share is, hey, you know what? Your transaction is profitable. Even if we lose a customer, we're going to be profitable. And we we don't care. Let's just you know we'll get more more transaction. If you don't like the price, if you didn't like the service, that's that's fine. We're just moving on. We're we're turning and burning. Whereas customer share focus, customer is profitable even if we lose money on a transaction. I know there's many times that people in this industry or, you know, in my business included, that, say, hey, we said, you know what, we have to, you know, it's not our fault, or maybe it is our fault. We can go back and forth, but the relationship is more important in this transaction, and we move, we, we make decisions based on that. And then <clears throat> your market share is that they're primarily going to use mass media to increase their visibility and announce their products versus customer shares are going to use interactive communication to determine individual needs and speak to their customers individually. So that is, you know, if you want to check your strategy, are you more customer share focused or more mass marketing focused, this is a, a nice little checklist uh, for you to go down and think about how you might apply those things. Uh, definitely. Now, uh, William said that uh, this is a 60-minute presentation, and I can see that we're running, for, you know, against the clock right now. I, I did have this down for a 90-minute presentation. so. William, if you wouldn't mind double checking uh, if this was supposed to be 90 or, or 60, uh, let me know. Because I'll, You're in I'll charge, have to Tim. Say that again, William? You're in charge. If you want to go 90, you can go 90. <laughs> All right. If, if, they, if people stay on, I guess that'll tell us, right? <laughs> I do. Res I want to do want to respect everybody's time. So um, I will, you know, we'll, we'll wrap this up as, as quickly as possible. And uh, you know, and any questions anybody has, or any ideas they want to you know share, just feel free to, to contact me and call me. Um, but let's go into a sort of a common misconception. Um, I think the major thing that we we get into in our industry is that oh, you know, we need a better system. You know, um, you know, it's just too much data to handle. You know, and these are all great systems out there. Like I try to list like every single one of them in the industry, and I apologize if I've missed one, but, um, you know, like, we always have this conception, like, oh, I, I need to be using this system. It's like, this system is, is preventing me from not, you know, reaching my goals or doing the things that I know I need to be doing to, to build a relationship with my customers. That's garbage. That's absolute garbage. It's a misconception. We're overloaded with information. You know, I always like to say, what are you doing with that information? You can you can have all the great places to put it. I've heard the stories of my clients that think, oh, you know, we implemented this new system. It practically bankrupt us. We almost lost all of our customers. That's kind of the harsh reality. So just go back to the basics. Again, simple, building relationships, picking up the phone, calling people, understanding, you know, what their real needs are. Hey, if you if you grow your business rapidly, and you've got some wonderful relationships that are year in and year out turning out, you know, good profit, you know, for your organization. Absolutely invest in these, these, uh, you know, systems. They're going to they're going to do wonders for, for you. But let's face it, 97 percent of our business, you know, the, the people in our business are small businesses. I mean, if you get hooked up with, uh, you know, some of the, uh, you know, I'll say, you know, you know, Geiger or I promote you or you know those type of franchise organizations, go you. I mean, that's going to help your your business, but go back to the basics of building those relationships because those systems are only as good as, you know, with the parameters we put around how we're going to use them and, you know, what the value and purpose is. So, again, it's not about a fancy CRM system. It's about you. The secret reality is this. It's about customer selection. You can't be everything to everybody. You've got to decide where you're going to focus your energy. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, what are you going to be the best in the world at? You know, and what do you want to be to your customers? It, it's it's a secret. It's reality. It's real. Well, it's not a secret anymore. <laughs> but you guys, all we all have to make that decision. Who do we want to be? Who do we want to know we exist? And how are we going to best serve them? What homework are we going to do? What research are we going to do? How persistent are we going to be? to really get everything out of that, the relationship that we've already built. So there is some basic strategy to this. Um, you know, unfortunately, not everybody wants a relationship with you or me. I mean, I know as crazy as that sounds, I mean, we're really nice people, we, we have character, we have integrity, uh, you know, we give great service, 
the fact is, is that not everybody wants that. And it takes time to build those relationships. So, you know, the biggest thing in, in basic strategy really is permission-based marketing. You know, we need people to give us permission to market to them. And a lot of times I know that I violated it over the years. I think, you know, we're all getting started out. You know, it's just easy. You know, we get an email list and, you know, off we send these people to sort of the unsolicited advertising. That would sort of be counter. That would be your more mass marketing strategy versus the more relationship marketing strategy. Get people to subscribe. Do, you know, provide valuable content, whether it be on social media, um, you know, get some, you know, get connected with more people, you know, that kind of thing. Have them buy into who you are and what you want to accomplish. And I think the uh, the success and the results that you're going to have are going to be far greater than, uh, you know, just, you know, putting a message out there to the masses. Um, th there's, you know, a couple really good things about this basic strategy around relationship marketing and when you know it's working. Um, you know, relationship marketing works when, the, believe it or not, when the customer teaches you or the salesperson what they want, then then you remember that as a salesperson, you give it back to them, and you deliver that solution. I mean, that's pretty profound. I mean, because you're in a point, you're in that, you're in that consultant view. You've got complete trust. They want to know what you think. They're going to you and saying, hey. Jim, this is what we need. I need your help. I need your recommendation. Can you get this done for me? Deliver on this solution. Wow. I mean, and those are the typically the orders that aren't five hundred dollars. You know, those are the orders that you know can change your change your business. And you know, sort of following up, you know, continuing on this is that the more that you and or the salesperson learn about that customer, the more opportunity there is to grow your sales, keep that customer, and get new customers because customers talk. Customers, they're going, to tell, they're going to tell their stories about you, which that can work for you or against you. But if you're relationship-minded, it is going to do wonders for your business. So just to um, – I, I kind of – I've got a grid here of how – you know, sort of the extremes of, you know, relationship marketing and kind of like it's a quadrant of companies and how they fit the uh, the relationship marketing slash mass marketing approach. So you've got, I've got Bill Cosby up there. He, he would more or less be what I would consider to be the epitome of uh, relationship marketing. You know, he is, he's quoted uh, by saying, you know, I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everybody. <laughs> That's from Bill Cosby. I don't know if you have any of you. I mean, I, I think you know, Cosby's like you know the he's the comedian. He's you know, I think America's father. You know, he's the Cosby Show. I mean, everybody I think watched him for years and years and years. But if you look at Cosby, you say, man, this guy was a storyteller. But the part of his story is that he's a high school dropout. <laughs> you know, but. You go to his concert. I went to a recent concert, and I'm, like, jammed in, like, sardines, and I'm in the cheap seats for $75 a ticket, you know, and this guy just packs the house. And he is there in a room of thousands of people, and you feel like you're sitting in his living room. And he, could, he just talks for hours. That's a guy that's very relationship-minded, understands the story. So, you know, if you can try to put yourself in that arena, where you want to be in your business. You know, think about, I want you to think about that image of Bill Cosby and the kind of relationships. The guy's just a natural, has a natural ability for that. You know, underneath that, I think, would kind of be the other extreme, would, would, would be the Walmart. They would have that mass marketing approach. And to the right of cause, we got Facebook. I mean, let's face it, Facebook knows more about you and me than, than we know about each other. I mean, it, it's just, it's unbelievable what they've done. You know, they, you know, they're sharing stories. They, they've just integrated a lot of great things. But let's face it, Cause is, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a slightly different brand, but they've really focused, you know, Facebook has really focused on, you know, the sharing of information and then building relationships. Now you go underneath Facebook and you look at that little blue box. I'm sure that, you know, 
many of you know that that's a jewelry box, and that's from uh, Tiffany's. And I don't know if any of you have shopped at Tiffany's, but I will tell you my experience has been it's like a privilege to do business with them. It's a very niche market, an absolute, like, it's, you know, the, you know when, when, when you give a, a jewelry to your wife or your girlfriend from Tiffany's, you know they're talking about to their friends about, then he showed up with the little blue box. I mean, that's the kind of brand and, and the marketing. So when you look at the spectrum of, you know, mass marketing versus relationship marketing, this kind of, like, really sums it up for you. And then to translate this over to well, what are each of those quadrants really saying, you know, if you think about the, quadrant, the top quadrant, ability to interact with customers individually. I think Cosby's nailed that. But then we look at uh, Facebook, one-to-one -one learning relationships. Absolutely. We're, Facebook knows all about us, and we know, you know, and, and we know all about our friends and probably more than we want to, but we're, like, totally growing. They're totally growing with us. We're totally telling them what we want, and they're listening. And, you know, it's somewhat, it's somewhat scary how much they're listening and how they're going to pop up ads are going to come and so you were talking about you're needing a refrigerator. You, you know, that's the kind of world that we live in and that's the kind of relation. I mean, that's a real extreme of how you've taken technology and really they're, they're building relationships with it and getting, right, getting the people with the right needs in front of, you know, the companies and organizations that can help them. Absolutely amazing. You know, and then we got, you know, Walmart. You know, they're they're very, you know, the customer really is only addressed in mass media. You know, they're, they're trying to work around that. Uh, you know, they're trying, obviously, like, you go in the store, they're trying to build that presence. But but really, mostly, you're, you know, you're addressed on price. You're addressed on, like, hey, we've got, you know, it's the season and we've got the product. Come in, get it, um, you know, kind of thing. And then, you know, from the, from the Tiffany standpoint, you know, that is a very niche market. It's a very established brand. And that's where... That's where they succeed, and they've made that work very well for them. Uh, so these are, you know, again, sort of an enterprise strategy map around the relationship and mass marketing I wanted to share with everybody. So, again, you know, sort of my three Ps of relationship or relationship tips are listen to people, be a passionate storyteller, show up on purpose. I mean, if we can do those things, um, we're, you know, again, in our type of business, we're going to be very, very, very successful. So, again, give you guys a couple examples. You know, this is sort of an, this is an integrated campaign I put together last year. I uh, had a tremendous amount of success with it. I've told this story, at, you know, in a couple of other seminars. But, you know, I, I was sincerely interested, sincerely passionate about our industry and about promotional products work. You know, I, I don't, I don't like this image of our industry being, you know, trinkets and trash and, you know, waste, fraud and abuse, you know, whatever you want to call it. So I want to get out there and I want to, you know, establish, like, in a promotional products work and it's an advertising medium that's been overlooked. This one is important to me. You know, I, you know, I've made a conscious decision. We made a conscious conscious decision as a business that the, media, the, the, the distribution of our product is going solely through the promotional products industry. I have to I have to support and advocate for this stream. You, uh, I assume most of the people on this call are my salespeople. I need a relationship with you. We've got to be we got to be rowing in the same direction, rowing together to advance this industry. So that's why I'm passionate about promotional products work. Last year I said you know, and I'm also passionate about marketing. I have to tell my salespeople that you know, as much as we are a toy company. We're, we're a marketing company, and, and that's where a lot of my passion is, you know, around the strategy about how do we move people in relationships? How do we get them to think of us maybe a little bit differently and really help them advance their business? So as I was reading about, the, you know, the industry's, uh, you know, purpose and, and mission and vision about this promotion process work week, I said, you know what, I read through this. I can do a couple of these things. But I said, hey, why not just do this for myself, you know, by sending a package here or there? Uh, to some, you know, local government officials. Maybe if other people want to use this product. And I came up with this campaign, Take the Tiger by the Tail. And I just asked, hey, like us on Facebook, we'll send you 10 free tigers. And if you're a fan on Facebook already, great, we'll send you one as well. Come on, Take the Tiger by the Tail. Well, <clears throat> it was a huge success. We took tigers, you know, we got 100, 
Facebook likes in 30 days. And there's a couple of pictures up here posted. Um, the Tiger, he ended up going to a trade show I didn't even go to last year, uh, but he was the uh, premier there. Um, we ended up, you know, and I picked this product because the product was actually a little bit under visible and it was sitting around a little bit longer and I said, yeah, I actually can solve some business challenges with this. I then took the Naked Tiger by the tail and I went to, uh, I went to my local, to the local high school, a teacher I know there, and she's the marketing and accounting professor. I said, hey, you know, any interest in me having to come and speak to your children or your students? Absolutely. Come on in. She said, I'm going to notify the press. I said, are you kidding me? She said, absolutely. I'm going to have uh, some, I'm going to have uh, the, uh, PR director for the uh, school district there. She'll be videoing. I'm like, oh, it'd be great. Well, that clip then got, you know, PPA, I got a hold of it, and it's appeared in multiple places, and just absolutely amazing. It's in actually the highlights, industry highlights there. And I also created a package where, um, it was such an infographic off to the mayor of downtown and uh, to, you know, the local state representative. Just things you can do, like, that the, the list is endless, but you got to pick something that's passionate, that you're really passionate, sincerely passionate about. And the relationships that unfolded were just amazing. So, you know, again, I challenge you, everyone, to create your destiny today, discover your passion, pick your purpose, work with people that you respect, determine why the result that you want to accomplish is really important to you, and then uh, last but not least, you know, share that vision with, with other people and get them excited about it um, because some really cool things can happen, and it's, it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, remember that it really comes down, like you say, passion, but it really comes down to hunger. You know, you can have all the best education in the world and all the skills and, and all that thing, but if you don't use them, it doesn't matter. It's all for nothing. You know, so, so it's, again, take this information, go out and use it. I mean, it's, you can't use it, like, exactly, but I think, I hope you get some of the concepts and some of the ideas around how you can make this work you know, for your business specifically. Um, is when you're, you know, you are going to, if you do this, you are going to make a big difference in your community and in the industry. And, and, and showing people really what an integrated marketing approach looks like and raising your value to say, I'm going to fire your marketing department. Wow, that's a bold statement. Yeah, I can do that. And here's how. And let me tell you the story about what we did for this client. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's the kind of impact that we can have. So I did a, I recently did another webinar for PPAI on Promotional Prize Work Week. So, and one of the, since Promotional Prize Work Week is coming up uh, uh, next week, I put together a special offer so that uh, I want everyone to seize the opportunity, create buzz for Promotional Prize Work Week. So we're doing a 50% off the product, but for as a gift for attending the webinar today, Go ahead and send me a shipper number, and we'll send you out 10 already pre logo promotional price work week. They're great magnets, blend up in kitchens and filing cabinets. Just get the message out there. I really uh, believe in this industry, and I want, uh, I want to get this message out there in, in every way possible. So if it, works, if it works for you and it works in your uh, marketing strategy and campaign, uh, please consider sending me an email. We'll be happy to, to get this out to you. And now is uh, sort of some Q&A time. So we, do we have any questions that came in? No, sir. Okay. All right. So uh, if there are any questions that uh, do come up, uh, please feel free to send me an email or give me a call, and I'll be, be happy, to, uh, happy to help answer any questions or develop any you know, strategies on relationships or, or marketing. Thank you. Um, let's make this the beginning, not the end of our relationship journey. We'd like to offer a special thanks to our speaker, Jim Sochi, uh, for sharing his expertise and ideas today. Today's webinar is copyrighted, all rights reserved by Promotional Products Association International. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation.